Failure. Quite an interesting choice for a band name, because I think most of us would avoid naming our bands something like that. It doesn't really set a good precedent, does it? It'd be like calling your band Garbage. I mean, who in their right mind would want to step up on stage and say, Hey everyone, we're Garbage. Okay, maybe I don't have the best logic here. But you've probably heard of Garbage, which I might not be able to say about Failure. So in a way, they unfortunately lived up to their name. Anyway, who is Failure? Well, the core of the band has always been Ken Andrews and Greg Edwards. Andrews is a singer, guitarist, bassist, and former Keanu Reeves stunt double. And Edwards usually plays guitar, bass, and keyboards. But if you can name an instrument, then he could probably play it. And their drummer since the mid-90s has been Kelly Scott. I don't think he writes any of their songs, but he's a damn good drummer, so he definitely shouldn't be forgotten. I think Failure's songwriting is generally a 50-50 split between Andrews and Edwards. Whilst Edwards handles more complex performances, and Andrews is in charge of recording and mixing their music. Yes, Failure mixes their own music, and it all sounds bloody fantastic. It's no surprise that Andrews went on to mix for some other bands after Failure broke up. Yes, including on that Tenacious D album. All of their albums are self-produced except for their debut album which was done by Steve Albini. And the general consensus suggests that the album suffered because of that. But that's for another video. For now I just want to focus on one of their albums. If you only ever listen to one Failure album, then it's gotta be this one. It's called Fantastic Planet. It was released in 1996, which was also the year that Smashing Pumpkins hit their commercial peak, both on the singles and albums charts, with Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness, their progressive double album that traversed various styles and moods while centering on heavy, metallic alt-rock. With that album being hugely successful, it's criminal that Fantastic Planet got nowhere near as much attention as Melancholy, because they both have powerful hooks alongside their aggressive guitars and general experimental approaches. Though Failures is perhaps a little more experimental. One of the biggest differences between these two bands is the way that they write melodies and riffs. The Pumpkins often base their songs around more familiar chord progressions, whereas Failure intentionally avoids these progressions and punctuate their unique progressions with chromatic riffs and sometimes just a ton of noise. Failure's particular style of writing feels like it's theirs and theirs alone. I doubt they'll be involved in any copyright lawsuits anytime soon, unless of course someone ripped them off and they're the ones doing the suing. Fantastic Planet is over an hour of the band's somewhat warped take on grungy 90s alt-rock, sharing the downbeat nature of a lot of its contemporaries, but with slightly more surreal lyrics, aside from a couple of drug references bringing moments of depressing reality. With this album, Failure also gained a reputation as a space rock band, which is fairly obvious in the album name and cover, but also because they create these sorts of alien landscapes with synths, distant guitars, and other sounds that are harder to pin down as well as some lyrics about space travel and strange visitors to top it all off. While it wouldn't really qualify as a concept album, it certainly feels as cohesive as one, with a couple of smaller tracks the band calls segues adding to the rewarding experience of listening to it as a whole. Going back to the idea of powerful hooks, Failure still have plenty of those despite their jagged nature. Just listen to songs like Sergeant Politeness and Smoking Umbrellas. They're a little strange, but they still have this anthemic quality, and this album's full of explosive choruses. The most infectious song on the album, at least in a more conventional way, would have to be Stuck On You, the song that got played on MTV. You can hear why Failure chose this song to be the main single from the album. It even has a chord progression that's somewhat, I guess, radio friendly. Stuck on you, till the end of time. I'm too Fittingly, the lyrics are about getting a song massively stuck in your head. Definitely sounds like it could be about love, but unfortunately, it was most likely about heroin use. Anyway, there's 17 tracks on this album, so this video would go for too long if I went into detail on many of those songs. So to wrap things up, I'm just going to single out the last four tracks on the album, because these are probably my favourite songs on it. A hell of a way to end an album. The fourth last track is called Another Space Song. This could be the band's defining song. The self-aware title adds to that idea. 
It takes a three note bass line and a short repeating drum rhythm and builds this dense world of warped guitars and other atmospheric sounds swirling around it. And on top of that, a spidery guitar line that few people other than the guys from Failure could make work. That's followed by Stuck On You, which I've already mentioned of course. But that seamlessly runs into Heliotropic, which has a similar feel to another space song, but on a much bigger scale with wild reverberating guitars and an awesome bass line. Distorted bass might I add. Failure love to mess around with the effects on their bass guitars, and it feels like not enough bands have done that. The world needs more fuzz bass, people. And there's another smooth transition to the closing track, Daylight, opening with an old sounding piano and other more subdued elements that complement Andrews' rough vocals quite well, before ending with a bang through a two minute long guitar solo that appears to have been run through every single effect pedal that they had. In short, Fantastic Planet is a fantastic album, well written, well arranged, and well produced. If you don't think that this video has sold you on the album, then just forget everything I've said and go listen to the album anyway. Seriously, it's great. There are some bands that I listen to that are rated a lot less than Failure. For instance, Aussie bands that never made any waves overseas and only had moderate success out here. Failure were already better off than some of these bands before their breakup, and especially since they reunited after they've accumulated all these fans over the years. But when it comes to the band's output, they still have nowhere near the level of recognition and success that they deserve. So in my mind, Failure is the most underrated band ever. And if you didn't know about them before you saw this video, then I hope I opened your mind up to something awesome. And if you want to see me do stuff like this around more lesser known bands, rather than someone like Radiohead or Weezer like I've done previously, then hit like and subscribe. And thanks for watching. Telephone